What's up guys, welcome back to the Team Storm Circus Live video. Turn the left side here, we have Phantom Knights going up against Snake Eye. So we have a Rogue deck, uh, which we have seen Jacob playing for the very longest time, going up against Melodious Snake Eye, which I will mention. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We are going to be seeing PK have the advantage, which is going first here, with a Summon of the Terror Top, and then we also have a copy of the Rite of Aramis here. Putting a little place, a copy of a token, and then the also... Uh, the Fateful Adventure onto the field. Quite a nice little boost to the deck, you know, not needing your normal summon. Um, I guess not always needing your normal summon, I should say. You know, Torn Skulls is quite a good normal summon here. We do also have the Tacky Tomborg in the hand, not the greatest, but we will be able to search for a copy of the Draco back, as well as the Griffin here, which then again, then discard the copy of Draco back, being able to equip it, since she's getting a stress card for free. With the synergy with this deck, for people who do not know, is you can actually discard some of the stuff if you have any of the PK engine with the Draco back as well, if you wanted to be able to search for it and then discard can be quite nice. But we are going to go into a copy of Cherubini. Now, this is the kind of the OG little line before level threes were kind of good. Um, or before we had like different kind of ways to go into it. You know, you just go for a Cherubini. Cherubini can then dump and give you access to uh, to any PK lines. And at one point, the actually the link three was banned. But we're going to be seeing the griffin being summoned we're going to be also dumping a copy of one of the uh, the abyss cards or not the abyss but the the ba cards here burning abyss and then we're going to go up into a copy of the um rusty and then we're going to be seeing the pk or the ba card bring back of the copy of cherubini you know being a free uh link material also quite nice with sp in the deck as well um but we're then going to act for the effect of rusty and we're going to be sending a copy of the cloak setting i believe was a fog blade banishing the cloak being able to search for but i assume it's going to be a boots which can then summon itself out because we do control a copy of a pk here and we have a torn scales which we're going to be then able to special summon out and the overlay here for a break sword and we're going to be seeing the rusty and we pop in that break sword there which can then bring back both copies here of and make them level four but they are going to kind of think what they want to go into they have a few options we haven't seen any hand traps from the opponent um but we're going to be boosting the attack of we're going to act with the effect of torn scales here discarding um the last card in the hand which was another copy of cloak to dump that copy of wings to the grave air which can bring back out um, the pop, the, the, the X, Y, Z, if we need to, to then get that rusty pop during the opponent's turn. We're going to go into a copy of uh, the IP here using those monsters, and that's going to then be able to also banish the copy of the cloak um, to then be able to set another copy of Fog Blade. So now we have a Draco back, uh, which is going to kind of protect that token from battle once and let it essentially have a bounce if they come back to the following turn. We have two copies of Foggy which also stops attacks. We have an IP going into that copy of um, the SP being able to banish, and we have a Griffin Rider as a form in the gate as well. So we kind of have two Veilers, a Omni, um, and then a Pop with a copy of the Nightwing being able to bring back with Popping with Rusty. Um, but we're going to be activating the effect of Wanted, and then we're going to be seeing a copy of Ostinato here. Uh, a crazy card, you know, maybe leading with that copy of Wanted in the draw phase. Hope, you know, hoping that they maybe kind of stop that with Griffin. But we do see the uh, Ostinato being hit with that copy of Griffin. It's being able to do so much for your engine, being essentially able to set up a two mat Appalooza and being able to beat over stuff in this case. You know, going to be able to be a triple DD Crow. I believe they play that in this deck. Um, just being a crazy engine here. We are going to be seeing the Diabell Star being able to discard itself by some sending the Snake Eyes Diabell Star here, which we are going to be seeing lots of at the regionals last weekend. Uh, I'm assuming that this deck did top uh, with the one, but we do see the Diabell get hit with that copy of Fog Blade. Um, then we're going to be seeing a Talents being dropped as well. You know, we can see the Griffin be activated there uh, to I'm going to assume take. And we're going to take a copy of Rusty. Going back and taking that IP definitely makes a lot more sense. Especially because, you know, we saw that Rusty cannot be used as a material. They probably were like, okay, well, if I take that copy of IP, it's going to get hit with that copy of Fog Blade there. If I do choose to act for the effect. But chances are they're not going to be able to act for the effect during your opponent's turn. Um, but, like, 
you kind of are stuck. Like if they choose to go for that copy of Rusty, then they won't be able to get that pop. Um, but they can't link away with it, which is a problem. If that card did not say if they, you know, can be used as link material, they would have most likely chose that copy of Rusty, not even just because it's a link three. I'm just going to be able to go link up with it. Um, but we're going to kind of have to think here if we're going to just go right into an SP Little Knight, which is a top card of their extra deck, looking like they're thinking we're going into it. But they're going to choose to go into it here. We are going to be seeing most likely a Fog Blade being flipped face up, but the SP can actually chain to that. Um, so we are going to be banishing the Fog Blade on the graveyard to try to target that copy of Break Sword here. Um, and then we are going to be chaining the SP. Or we're not chaining the SP there. Okay, that, that's interesting. And then we're going to be seeing the Rusty effects to target the SP to pop it there. Um, and it, it was made with IP, therefore it cannot be destroyed. Uh, very important to remember. Um, that it, it still has zero points effects, uh, which is still going to be kind of crazy there. Definitely a little bit of a misplay for the PK player's part. I would have, I misplayed it myself until I saw that the SP didn't get destroyed. I constantly forget about that, um, which we saw in another video the other day. Uh, we didn't get normal summon the copy of Snake Ice Ash, one of the best normal summon in the game, you know, being a, a new OTS 24, I believe, uh, or 25. Uh, ultimate rare, which looks absolutely incredible. If you guys have not seen it, um, but then we're going to be able to search for the poplar, being able to sew itself out, and then we're going to be activating the poplar effect to be able to search. We then get to go ash effect, sending the itself and the poplar to go into the oak, and we're also going to be seeing the poplar most likely put the snake eye diabel start into the spell and trap card zone, which is going to be essentially another body being able to summon it back out. And so oak's going to activate its effects, be able to bring out, and will that hit with a copy of we're not even activating it okay interesting but we're going to go for the snake as i have bell star summon itself out and uh we're then going to activate its effects sending itself plus another card here to go for that flame bridge which was in the hand so if i'm not mistaken they opened up the snake as die bell star and the copy of uh of Flame Burge, which is kind of unfortunate, but they did have Ash Asanato wanted, um, so that is kind of a kind of a fair and a talent. Uh, I, I take those. I take those. Those are kind of custom hands, to be honest. But we're gonna be seeing them link away into the Dark Charmer here, um, and then Dark can take. Take that copy of IP once again. You know, I'm gonna steal your IP. This is that the deck. Steal your IP dot deck. Then we're gonna link up into a copy of Celine. Celine does have multiple counters um, and can summon back out. Um, but are we gonna hit that with the fog blade? Is the question. We're going to be bringing out back that copy of the Snake Eyes Diabellster. And for a second, I thought we were going to overlay. Do we play access code? We are going to link away into the Nightmare Phoenix. We're going to send the copy of the card we searched off of the copy of the Poplar. Um, and then we are going to be chaining to summon. We are flipping the fog blade on that copy of Phoenix. Definitely don't want them to draw additional card. Um, but we are still going to be seeing that being able to bring back out both. We then get to go when we see Oak Effect then bring out the Poplar as well, which I mentioned just another body onto the field. Um, we're going to go the effect or we're going to link away now up into the princess, which can bring back out that copy of Flame Bridge here. And we can then go up into a copy of Promethean uh, or Bracy Promethean and the oh, Ash go into a copy of the uh Raging Phoenix, and then we can go right up into the Zelantis line, and this is like what one of the most powerful engines, uh, like, you know, this deck is insane. We see them eating the hand traps, we see them hitting two fog blades, and they still are able to power through this. Now, to be honest, this hand was very custom, uh, but at the same time, like, this is insane. 
there and make sure they read the cards there. They're going to activate the effect of Flame Burge. Or no, they're just going to go right into battle phase, attacking into that copy of the Rusty. Now, they do have uh, the wings in the graveyard to bring out another body. We're going to be seeing Selene attack into that copy of the uh, Breaksword here. Then Oak attack into that Cherubini. And Cherubini will protect itself by sending that copy of Draco back, which then can re-equip itself to the token. Um, what is going on here? I'm not even sure, to be honest. But we are down to 47. Um, they're reading the effect of itself. I think it's like if another card would be destroyed, you can pop a card instead. But you can't pop a card that's marked for destruction. And here we do see someone pick it up to read it. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've read Cherubini as well. I, I'm not too familiar on uh, what it can do, but... We're going to be seeing them pop the cards. And we're going to go Flame Burge, push it into the Spell and Trap card zone. The reason why we push it into the Spell and Trap card zone is because we have so much um, to just follow up through. Like, we can go into an Appalooza if we wanted to, um, which is kind of going to be able to solve the top deck alongside the, uh, like, alongside that problem of, um, of the whatever it's called in the graveyard, that copy of uh, of the Wings and the Fog Blade. But, um, you know, we're, we're not going to get very far. Especially, we still have the Zelantis being able to pop the cards. We drew into something else. Um, we still have the uh, the Flame Bird touching the graveyard, being able to summon back out two bodies, which is going to be just huge. We still have the Origins back in the deck, which we did set, our, or we wanted to draw uh, probably drew into an imperm or just a bluff either or is just so great um but we, we have two bodies we can summon back out we also have the copy of uh of what's his face in the graveyard which can trigger but we're gonna go fog blade banish to summon out the copy of rusty and then we are gonna princess this then we're going to be seeing Flame Bridge bring out the Oak as well as the Ash. And then we can see Ash and the Oak summon out the Poplar, which can then search. And then we also get to have a search itself. Um, we're searching for a Snake as Ash. And then Poplar is going to be able to trigger here. Or choosing not to. Why would we not search with Poplar? Hmm. I wonder why they don't want to search with Poplar. We could search for origins. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not too sure to be honest. I wonder if there's a reason why we chose to not. We don't really need to. We're, we're winning this regardless here. But we're going to be seeing a banishment of cloak, something with the torn scales. Um, but they just scoop it up, realizing they just we have lost. Like. Like, you can search for Divine Temple, too, with Poplar. I, I don't even... Like, you just make the top decks just significantly better. Is there a reason why we don't want to search? I mean, I don't think so. If there is, let me know in the comment section down below why you guys think we don't want to search. You know, it could have been we are way too far ahead in uh, in card advantage that we just absolutely kind of forgot. You know, we do see them talking a little bit back and forth. They've known each other for a very long time. Um, but, yeah, like, PK is just unfortunately kind of power crept. Uh, at least with Snake Eyes in the format, you know, Snake Eyes is being an absolute devastating deck. Like, this deck has so much gas, so you just keep going and keeps going alongside playing those extra hand traps. And there are some times where you're not playing against, like, the best deck. Um, like, we have seen, like, the Snake Eyes mirror match. Um, you know, if you do open up all engine and your opponent opens up a couple hand traps and non-engine, um, or all, couple hand traps and engine, I should have said there, uh, you're essentially just going to be winning. But, like, with this... You just don't have a chance, unfortunately. It's like that's kind of like the kind of 
why people are kind of upset with Snake Eyes right now. They're like, okay, well, we need a ban list. It's too powerful, which I can kind of understand where people are coming from in the sense of like, yeah, this deck is like insane. Like truly it is insane. Um, you know, if you look at it just on a sheer power level, it has the consistency that Tier did not have. Now, like Tier, when you added the Ashizu cards, of course, it was very powerful. And it had Herald of the Orange Lights. There was nothing else that really could stop it because it could play during both your turns. Um, you know, being able to use the effects of multiple different bodies to fuse. And then we started getting to Link cards. It was quite, it was quite powerful. You know, the Shufflers being able to interrupt. Nothing really hurt the decks other than Shifter. But with like Snake Eye, it's like no matter what you do going first or second, chances are you are losing because the power levels of it is just so high. And if they do open up those hand traps, that they can play multiple copies of hand traps. You know, I think we're up to like 16 in the deck. Um, you know, where Tier just couldn't do that. It was all gas and uh, and no breaks. But we see Snake Eyes having the same power level and hand traps just kind of go crazy with this. We are diving on to game two. We're going to be seeing PK choosing to go first. Once again, we see a Torn Scales alongside a right to go into that copy. And we do summon up the copy of Temple here. So maybe having the Griffin Rider already in the hand or needing that copy of the uh, the dump here off the Burning Abyss cards, which we are going to be seeing. Dumping the Graph. And then we do Ash this. Now, um... To be honest, I like this Ash. I really do. Now, the reason why I like this Ash is because it makes it so that we have to have another body to use. You know, a well-timed hand trap can just be completely devastating. We do have a copy of Talents to draw two more cards. You know, the second chance here, I mean, we already did Normal Summon. We did see a Cloak and another copy of Talents. Definitely not the cards you were looking for, but will the Nibiru in the hand be enough? We're going to banish a temple to search once again. Kind of just saying, yeah, it was not. But that Ash was a very well timed, you know, one hand trap being able to cut down the deck. This is equivalent to an Ash on an OSS or original Sinful Spoils for people who do not know what that card is. Um, I'm going to assume we're going to be safely putting down a copy of, uh, of Talents as a face down. But instead, we're going to go for a copy of Link Spider here which can then go up into a copy of SP Little Knight um, to play through this. What? We're going to go for a Nightmare Unicorn effect, discarding the Cloak to shuffle back the Fateful. Now, uh, now this, this is what we call pro play PK playing. So the reason why we did this is because we actually want to just discard that copy of Cloak. Um, which can then banish itself to search for a copy of Boots, which can actually now bring back with the Torn Scales because we did see a monster being discarded. We then act for the Torn Scales effect, discarding that copy of Rite of Aramisir to then be able to dump another card being the copy of Wings. We now special summon out the copy of the Boot in the hand, overlay, or not overlaying. We can overlay or we can go into a copy of Rusty here, you know, using the Nightmare Unicorn as a Link 1. But like this was, uh, this is big brain. I would never have thought that. Um, being able to draw into that. But we do see them dump a copy of gloves instead of the copy of wings. Some of the boots here, and then we're going to be seeing that going up into the rusty. We can then discard a, or we can send a card to set a trap. We're going to go into a copy of the what's his face. The XYZ to go then up into a copy of dark. What? The boot's then gonna banish itself. Oh, we don't wanna banish our torn scales. We're gonna be searching for a copy of the gloves, or of the trap here, of the of whatever Bardish, which can then let us go into the copy of the Bardish here. And they have the second hand trap. <sighs> Saving that for the Rusty is insane. We're gonna be banishing the gloves and being able to dump that copy of wings, which can bring out the copy of the XYZ. But is that going to be enough alongside that Nibiru? A double hand trap is quite good for this, but being able to time those hand traps perfectly, like we see here, just hurts the deck significantly. And we see an Ostinato as well. That itself, we see a little bit of frustration on the PK's player side. Um, but being able to send the refrain, refrain to go for a copy of the 
uh, Bacha here. Bacha can then summon out another copy of the refrain, which can then search for the copy of Couplet, and Couplet can bring the copy of... Oh, we did not actually activate the effect there. Kind of forgetting. I mean, we're going to be the activating the effect, searching for a copy of uh, the fusion spell here. Then we're going to go up into another copy, or going for the Shiberta, uh And we are realizing here, uh-oh, we forgot to, uh, to summon there. We're going to be Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, bringing out... And I mean, it, it, it does matter. You are getting level essentially a level four off the field, um, which it, it is quite impactful, especially if we're playing the Flame World Banshee, being able to search for a Poplar. But we have a wanted to be able to search for that copy of the Diabell Star. Um, we're going to be going into the copy of the Bacha there. Um, we're we're going to be sending the Diabell Star. We're going to be sending Bacha for Diabell Star, which is then going to be able to trigger the Bacha alongside the copy of Concerto, letting us draw a card, summon itself out. Uh, we have that triple DD Crow as well onto the field, ready to banish those cards at any moment's notice. But we're going to be going into the OSS, sending the copy of Diabell Star going into an Ash. Ash can then go for the Poplar. Poplar can then summon itself out, activating the effects, searching for the Divine Temple. Now, in this case, I feel like we're going to be dropping in a beer here before the Temple is on the place on the field because of the fact that we want to uh, keep keep our bodies. All right, we want to make sure that they don't summon off here. So here we're going to change Shiberta for sure, getting rid of the trap and the XYZ alongside that copy of the uh, these scales. We most likely chain the trap to summon out a body. Um, or no, we just let them all resolve there. And just making sure that we don't get that nib token a little bit bigger, I suppose. But we're going to be summoning out that token there. And, you know, we are going to be kind of stopped here, you know, bringing itself to a halt. We have used OSS. We have used Ash alongside Poplar. Actually, in the field spell to put a copy of Flame Bridge or Oak into the back row most likely won't do too much. Um, but we are going to be activating it anyways. You know, it's going to make it so that our opponent has to kind of uh, be careful when they play. But placing a copy of um, Snake Eyes Dia Bellstar here instead. We didn't even act for the Poplar effect, so we're going to be able to bring it back out later in the turn when we just go the effect of Snake Eyes Bell Star placing the Poplar, and now we can play through Nibiru regardless. Kind of crazy, to be honest. So Poplar, we're able to put into the Spell Trap for Zone later. We're then going to draw out the Wanted to play with more with our deck, and we draw into a copy of Bonfire here. That's a pretty nice draw. Because guess what? We have it normal summoned. So now we can just normal summon the Snake Eyes Oak, getting the Snake Eyes Ash from the graveyard here. And we are once again off to the races. You know, Ash and Oak have not activated its effects to then be able to put the Flame Bird on the field, which we are going to be seeing in the hand once again. But we do not care. We are so far ahead in card advantage that we we're just smoking our opponent. Uh, you know, this deck is just absolutely cruel. We saw them eat in a Biru. We saw them double hand trap and still misplay it with a copy of Refrain getting punished there. Um, but it does not matter. We still have game on the field through an Ibiru with this. Uh, we're going to be summoning up the copy of Reframe with the Pendulum Summon. And our opponent just scoops it up because this is going to be over game. Being able to push that copy of the Nibiru token back, or copy of the Nibiru into the back row is kind of just, you know, degenerate. That's not what Flame Bird was meant to be used for. You know, it's going to be able to put your own resources. But we saw in both games here, being able to put your opponent's resources back there makes it sure that they cannot use those cards. And being able to take those, it was just absolutely just devastating. Game one, we saw the pure power of Snake Eyes. And game two, we saw being able to throw those hand traps extremely well against a rogue type deck like this, uh, which I think is fair. You know, PK is a very fair deck. We saw some very technical gameplay from the PK player, which we're still able to get them quite far into it. But having those exact hand traps choke points is just very unfortunate. We see Snake Eyes degeneracy being shown as well here from the right side. Being played quite well, you know, we did see a couple of misplays, you're not searching with Poplar, and then of course not bringing it with a couplet, but we all make those mistakes, especially me. If you guys have seen any of my Snake Eyes gameplay, it's absolutely horrible. Um, so shout out to both players here by for showing off that good gameplay. I wanted to kind of show you guys how the, the meta kind of has evolved. And you know, sometimes you can take wins with those PK decks, but then other times you are facing, like this was the finals of a tournament as well, which is kind of kind of rough to see there. You know, you can go good for so long and then being able to play in Snake Eyes in the finals and just get absolutely shit on with no competition there. 
Uh, regardless, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to see more content like this. Don't forget to stay safe. Peace.